Airbnb files for its IPO. What does it mean to investors? What does that look like? Will you be investing in things like that? We're going to do so much more on this episode. We're going to talk about not only Airbnb filing for its IPO, we're going to take a look at what they're filing, who are their competitors, and will it be a good investment for investors or whatnot? So I won't say would it be a good investor, but would it be a smart, smart investment financially for investors or not? So the first thing out there, ladies and gentlemen, I would like guys and girls to understand what is uh, Airbnb. So for a lot of people out there who don't know what Airbnb is, Airbnb is pretty much a new age. How would I put it? It's kind of like the Uber of the hotel and travel industry. You know, usually when we go to book a hotel or whatnot, we fly, we buy, we, we maybe go on to, we used to use a travel agency back in the day. Now we use the internet to book a hotel. Some people may book a, you know, big hotels or whatever the case may be. But now people have the ability to be able to rent their house out for a week, a day, a month, a year, or for a vacation. Now, instead of going to houses, people can now go to, uh, instead of going to hotels, people can now go to other people's houses. For prime example, take me, take my dad. Let's say my dad passed away and left me his house. And I have this big house that I don't want to sell or anything like that. I can actually rent that house out during certain seasons. Maybe it may be a big season down where I'm from, Waynesboro, Georgia. It's right near Augusta, Georgia. And I can rent it out for the masters. So for the masters, for that one week, people can rent out my house. Or if people were passing through, I can rent out my house for the weekend, a week, a day, whatever the case may be. Some people just do Airbnb where they just rent out their houses. Even further with Airbnb, I've seen it where people just rent out their rooms. You know, some people rent out their rooms. So pretty much it's taking the hotel world by storm. Airbnb is just an online company that facilitates supply and demand of, of real estate or whatnot, just like Uber. Uber doesn't own any taxis. You know, Uber doesn't own any taxis, but it doesn't own any cars. But guess what? It has the largest taxi service in the world. It's the same thing with Airbnb is doing. Airbnb, it is becoming the largest hotel chain in the world, but it owns no hotels. Kind of crazy how time works. So um, it's almost like social media. Facebook is becoming the largest media outlet, but it owns no media outlets. We all contribute our content to it to make it great, right? So the thing about it is Airbnb, it is different. It is changing the way that we do things. We all have heard of it. You know, for prime example, why it's so big? Because people, when they travel, they no longer have to worry about, hey, you know, I have to stay at the Marriott or I have to stay at the Hilton. Now I can just grab someone's house or I can grab someone's room or whatever. And it's a whole lot cheaper than purchasing a hotel room, worrying about hotel prices, things like that or whatnot. And also it's good for people who own regular houses. They can take their regular house and turn it into a hotel. The same is that the same exact concept as Uber. People take Ubers because they're uh, cheaper and more convenient. And people drive Uber because it's easier to get into. So pretty much, I hate to use this word. I know it's not a word, but pretty much Airbnb is Uberizing the hotel and travel industry. Now, with that being said, it is filing this IPO. What is the IPO, Franks? This is an initial public offering. This means that right now, Airbnb is a private company, meaning you have to know somebody, you have to be friends with somebody, all the other great stuff or whatnot, or whatever the case may be, or you have to be an executive of the company in order to be an investor, or you have to be an accredited investor, meaning that you must have, as a single person, you must, over the last two to three years, you may have, you have earned over $200,000 in, in income and have a million dollars in network uh, in a network, not including your primary residence. So with that being said, um, you know, for the, actual, the everyday person, you don't have an opportunity to invest in Airbnb until it becomes to the public. Once it becomes to the public, it's fair game. Anybody can invest in it. Anybody that has an E-Trade, a TD Ameritrade, a Squab, Charles Schwab, someone who has an investment manager or whatever, you can text your investment portfolio manager and says, hey, I want Airbnb. That's what an initial public offering is. This is their initial public offering, their first time coming to the public, and you will probably see them on the NASDAQ ringing the bell. It'll probably be a big thing when they finally go public. Very good accomplishment for a company to go public. Very good for the people that's already in. Now, this is my belief when they go public. I think that Airbnb has a great name. It is revolutionizing the game, but I think it's going to fall to fate to all big name buzzword Airbnb. Um, not Airbnb, but big name companies that go public. 
For prime example, we've seen this with Uber. We've seen this with Lyft. Um, we've seen this with very big companies that go on public and everybody just wants a piece of it. Everybody will rush in and rush the price up. For prime example, it will come out before they go public. Airbnb will be $50. I'm hypothetically speaking. Please don't quote me on that. It will say, hey, it'll be $50. And the day it goes public, it goes public. The price is going to run up so high. It's probably going to run up to 80 bucks. Everybody's going to get excited about it. Oh, Airbnb, oh, it's so great or whatnot. But I guarantee you 98% of the general public has not read the S1 report. The S1 report is the report that is available right now that will tell you about Airbnb. Who are the competitors to Airbnb? Who's the number one competitor to Airbnb? Does Airbnb make money? Does Airbnb competitor make money? How much money do they make? Why is this so important? Because it's a great gauge of where I would think you would be. So Airbnb, if you read the S1 report, every financial report, especially the 10K report, it will tell you who is the number one competitor? Who are my number one competitors? So you take for a prime example, uh, Airbnb, they said their number one competitor or OTA, something they call OTAs, that might be an official name, is online travel agencies. Their number one, uh, number one online travel agency is Booking Holdings. Booking Holdings, who's heard of Priceline? Have you heard of Priceline? That is the old name for Booking Holdings. So Booking Holdings, it was previously known as Priceline.com, that is now, um, that was Priceline.com, that is now Booking.com. It is the number one competitor that you will see against uh, Airbnb. Now you have to ask yourself this question, what is bookings.com, how much money do they make? What is their market cap, right? So why is this so important? Why would you care? Because this gives me a great indication of how the company that I'm looking to invest into, that you're probably gonna invest into, how would it fare up? If the number one person in your industry is not making money, I will shy away from that company. For prime example, let's say a new company came out called Ride Food Ride. And Food Ride is pretty much going to do what DoorDash is doing. It's going to do what Postmates and Uber Eats is doing, things like that. I wouldn't be very interested in investing into them because I know the biggest name in the in the brand and the biggest name in that sector is Uber. Uber is not profitable yet. If Uber is not profitable, what, me, what makes me think this little company will get to profitability? The likelihood, probably not, right? So if the big boy in your industry is not making money, how will you make money, right? Unless you've got some new type of way, some new type of technology that I don't know about or whatever the case may be or whatever. Because this is a big thing about when you have a small company that comes in with new technology. A small company that comes in with new technology what do you think the big company is probably going to do or should be doing? The big company is going to take that same technology, that same business model, and they're going to apply it to their already big base. And if you follow the S1 report, Airbnb will tell you that. For prime example, what's stopping Priceline.com or Booking.com from taking what Airbnb is doing and pretty much put it on their platform? They already have a competitive advantage because they're that much bigger than them already. Right. So this is very important because people like to um, people like to look at companies and people like to look at companies and say, hey, well, I know this company. I'm very familiar with it or whatever. But for me, if I was going to invest into Airbnb, I would take Airbnb and I would take Booking.com and I would compare them. Who's making the most money? Who's doing the uh, who's doing the best things or whatnot? What is their market cap? How much money is Booking.com making? What, are, what is Airbnb doing different from booking.com? What is the difference between the business models? Because if I can't understand it, then, and I really wanted to get in, and I really wanted to become an investor, I would look to becoming an investor in booking.com over Airbnb if I did not understand the business model. I know Airbnb is new, is fresh, or whatever the case may be, but it's walking into a space where someone already exists, where juggernauts already exist. Now, let's take a look a little bit deeper here into Airbnb. Let's look at their finances. So when you look at the finances of Airbnb, why is this so important? The finances is so important because it's a simple concept of, I have to ask this, the question, do you make money? If you do make money, how much money do you make? If you don't make money, why would I invest into you? So right here, 
This is the biggest competition. Booking.com, Booking.com, I think this uh, Priceline.com, Expedia, Expedia.com, uh, HomeAway, Hotels.com, Orbis.com, Travelocity, Trip.com, um, Trip.com, it's a number of them. It's another name that I can't even hear really figure out. Well, I can't not figure out, but announce, you know, announce stated names or whatever the case may be. Now we have also the big competitors are search engines like Google, travel search products, so and regional search engines. So why is Google search engine a competitor to Airbnb? They look at that as a competitor to Airbnb because let's say if I'm traveling to New York City and I want to get an Airbnb instead of a hotel, the number one search engine in the world is Google. I type into Google, can I see an Airbnb pop up? So they look at that as a, uh, a issue, right? Do you have Chinese short-term rental competitors? You have online platforms offering experiences, um, kayak.com, you know, KK, kkday.com. Our competitors are, uh, this is what they're saying. Our competitors are adopting aspects of our business model, which could affect our ability to stand out in the marketplace from our competitors. Increased competition can reduce our demand of our platform, um, our hosts and our guests slow our, go, uh, slow our growth and materially adverse our business, right? Many of our potential competitors enjoy substantial competitional competition advantage. Some of them have bigger names. Some of them have bigger brand recognition. Some of them have a longer, a longer operating history, larger marketing budgets, and loyalty programs. As we substantially uh, greater financial, they have greater financial assets, technical tools, and resources. Now, this is what Airbnb is saying to its investors. It's competition, right? They're saying, hey, we have competition. This is a risk to us, right? Also, they're saying we are subject to a wide variety of complex solving and sometimes inconsistencies, ambiguous laws and regulations that may adversely impact our operation. This is what we call political risk. A company just experienced, uh, we learned a great lesson about political risk was Uber. Who remembers Uber back in California? Remember Uber in California? Uh, I think that was Proposition 22. Proposition 22 pretty much when in California was going to destroy Uber and Lyft as we knew them. But guess what? The people voted no, because what they want to do with Uber and Lyft, the government said, no, you must not have Uber drivers listed as contractors. You must list them as employers. California, if, if Uber had to list those people as, had to list drivers as employees, it would have wrecked their whole business model. That was the political risk they had, but they was able to defeat that. And since then, the stock has gone on a nice tear, right? So they, they're saying that, hey, laws, depending on what type of laws can happen, that can um, slow down Airbnb's growth, right? So another thing they put in here, we are subject to regulatory inquiries, litigations, disputes. They can be sued. That's any company and every company. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure they've had plenty of uh, lawsuits already. We could face liability information for contents, accessibilities through platforms. They could be, you know, their platform could break down. I'm not really worried about the legal side of the house. Home sharing may not achieve goal, uh, uh, global acceptance. So here's another risk they say, home sharing may not achieve global acceptance. While home sharing has grown in popularity, home sharing may not achieve global acceptance, uh, particularly in regions where home sharing may not be deemed attractive to hosts and guests due to culture um, considerations. The attractiveness of our platform for hosts and guests is impacted by the number of factors, including the willingness of individual hosts to offer their homes on our platform, platform and, the will, and the willingness of guests to book stays at homes in lieu of more traditional options, such as hotels or our ability to continue to extend operating models intentionally and offer localized services that are desirable to our hosts and guests and our ability to offer cost effectiveness alternative to traditional accommodations. That's just a big word of saying that, um, People, this may not be, this may not become a popular thing. Everybody, everybody may not want to Airbnb their home. Also, on the reverse side, as a homeowner, I may not want to Airbnb my, Airbnb my home. I think people may tear up my home, tear up my things, or whatever. On the reverse side, people may not be comfortable with Airbnb 
Airbnb and being a guest. Like for prime example, some people may choose to just stay in a hotel. Hey, I just want to stay in a hotel. I want to stay on a resort. I don't want to do Airbnb, right? So it has to be accepted by two sides. You have to have a host and you also have, a, have to have a guest. So you have to have a host and you also have to have a guest. So what we're going to do here we're going to take a quick break, and after this break, we're going to get furthermore into some of the risk factors with Airbnb going public that most people don't tell you about. So we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be right back with more of the IPO of Airbnb. And we're back here live on the Prince of Investment, Prince Dice, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via Honolulu, Hawaii. Now, before the break, we talked about the IPO of Airbnb, the initial public air, uh, the initial public offering of Airbnb. So this is their first time going to the public. We talked about Airbnb, some of its weaknesses. We talked about what was the IPO. What was the strategy, the com competition to uh, Airbnb? And now we're going to get into some of the strengths for the rest of the show of Airbnb. Now, here's some of the strengths. When I look at Airbnb and I look at some of the weaknesses, you know what always rings in the back of my head? It's Uber. Uber is directly is a cousin or a sister or brother of Airbnb. Why? When you look at all of the weaknesses of Airbnb, they're the same weaknesses that we've already seen Uber go through. The first thing is some people just don't, the global acceptance of Airbnb. Some people don't like the idea of riding in someone else's car. They feel it's dangerous. It's not culturally acceptable. The second thing with Airbnb is criminal, not criminal Airbnb, Uber, criminal, right? You have, oh, how many people have heard stories of an Airbnb, an Uber driver shooting somebody? Somebody shooting an Uber driver. Somebody, you know, robbing an Uber driver or somebody having a wreck in an Uber car. All type of stories that we hear when we hear about Uber and we hear about the things that they're doing, right? Then you hear, the, then, then you've seen the political aspect that Uber had to go through. Uber just beat Proposition 22 out of California. When you read the, the weaknesses of Airbnb, they're the exact same thing that you already seen with Uber. So, and when you look at their business model, it's just pretty much Airbnb is doing what Uber did to taxi cab businesses. Uber is just pretty much a platform that offers one people rides and it offers people to give rides. That's it. We look at Airbnb, it's doing the exact same thing. It has a host and it has a guest. People are offering up their house and the guests are taking their house. That's it, right? So Airbnb and you have Airbnb and you have Uber, you can see the similarities to them Big time, right? The big difference between Airbnb and Uber, the reason why um, I'm a bit advocate of Uber so far, is because Uber is the only one in this sector. Meaning that when you look at, you know, nowadays, nobody, who's catching tax gaps? Not that many people. I mean, so Uber is number one in this space. You have Uber, you got Lyft, you got DoorDash, you have other companies out there that's doing, um, but the big boys are Uber, Lyft, Pretty much is Uber and Lyft. Uber is number one, and it's the only one that's over there. It's over there by itself. Uber and Lyft, they're in their own little, they, I think they call that the gig economy, where people just do gigs for money real quick. So that's in the gig economy. It's an economy by itself. Airbnb is different to the fact that it is not going into a sector by itself like Uber did. Airbnb is going into a sector like uh, that's already there. They're just trying to revolutionize it. 
For prime example, we still have Marriott's all over the country. We still have Hilton, Hilton hotels all over the country, Days In. We still have Travelocity. We still have Expedia. We still have online travel agencies all over the country. We have online travel agencies. We have all types of things across the country already, right? So when you look at Airbnb, even though it is the cousin to Uber, it's going to have a more uphill battle to dominate its space. Uber is dominating the gig economy. You know, Uber has three ways it's making money. It's making money from travel. It's making money from giving, well, ride, giving people rides, also delivering food, also freights. Those are the three big ways it makes money. Versus Airbnb, when you look at it, it's going into an economy that's already established. They're just trying to revolutionize it. They're already companies. Travelocity is already there. Booking.com is already there. AKA Priceline is already there. So what they're looking to do is to revolutionize what's already there, which is a stronger, which is a bigger feat than Uber, what Uber is doing. Because easily Priceline.com, Booking.com, Hotels.com could easily stretch their head and say, let's do exactly what um, Airbnb is doing. They can take the exact same business model that Airbnb is doing and market it to the millions of users they already have booking.com can already say hey look now you can post your house not only on airbnb you can post it on booking.com and you're crazy to think that's not going to happen so airbnb has a bigger fight upon his hands so let's go to some of his strengths okay right here it said our core strengths we have six core strengths that help airbnb create a new category and gives us a competitive advantage one unique host community the more than 4 million hosts in our community are unique as their homes are and experiences they have shared. We have the majority of our 5.6 million active listings only available on Airbnb. Number two, engage guest community. So they're saying that they have hosts. Hosts are the people who are giving up their land or their house or whatever to be used or to be rented out. The other side, engage host community. Our host, um, our hosts have welcomed hundreds of millions of guests arrive through Airbnb. Our guests come directly to our platform, actually participate in our community and return regularly to book again. So they're saying, hey, we already have users, we already have guests and we already have hosts. Another thing is a global recognized brand. Our brand is recognized globally and Airbnb is used as a noun and verb in countries all over the world. A prime example, Uber. Uber has done the same thing. I'm going to, this is the Uber of rental properties. So Airbnb is saying we're the Airbnb. It's becoming a noun and verb. They have a nice brand recognition. Number four, global network. Hosts and guests attract each other to Airbnb, creating a global network across more than 220 countries or regions. So they have a global network, okay? Number five, custom built platform. Our technology platform was built for the unique needs of our hosts and guests, it allows us to quickly adapt to what our hosts and guests around the world require and delivers deep business intelligence insight to help manage our marketplace. So they have their own marketplace. Number six, design-driven approach. Since the beginning, design has been at the core of everything we do and we enable us to create a new category. So right now they're saying, hey, we already have a bunch of hosts. We have a bunch of guests that are um, at 220 countries around the globe that we're using each other's and things like that. That's great what you're doing. I wanna know what your long-term strategy is. That's what they're gonna speak about now. Our strategy is to continue to invest in our key strengths. Number one, unlock more hosting. So they wanna create more people to put their host online. In order to have enough selections for our guest bookings on our platform, we will continue to invest in growing the size of quality of our host community. We believe that we have just scratched the surface of the opportunities that a hosting can provide. So they look to get more hosts in the future. That's how they look at, um, this is where the bread and butter for an investor. I don't care about what you did already. You're already a global brand. You already got hosts and guests. What are you gonna do in the future? So they're saying they're gonna look to get more hosts. Number two, grow and engage our guest community. We intend to attract new guests to Airbnb and convert more of them to our brand advocates. We, we will continue to focus on engaging our existing customers to return 
to book to us to Airbnb more frequently. So we want the host to use more. Number three, invest in our brand. We intend to invest more deeply in our brand to educate new hosts and guests on the benefits of Airbnb and the uniqueness of our offering. Okay, number five, expand our global network. We plan to expand our global network in countries in which we already have deep presence as well as to expand into new marketplaces where our uh, penetration is lower, such as India, China, Latin America, South Asia, and tens of thousands of similar marketplaces to remote areas around the globe, around the world. They want to innovate their platform. We will innovate and to improve our guest and host experiences on Airbnb. Now, uh, design and new products. Okay. So, you know, right now they're getting beat down because of COVID-19. COVID-19 came through and shocked a lot of people, but it helped out a lot of people. So that's where you have it right here, ladies and gentlemen. We talked about Airbnb. Of course, are they making money? No. We looked at their strengths. We looked at their long-term strategy. We looked at their competition. We looked at uh, their ability to be able to walk into a new marketplace and to be able to dominate, uh, not dominate, but to be able to get it to the, get to the top of a new marketplace, which is at the top of the hill right now, is booking.com, priceline.com, aka priceline.com, which is booking.com now, is at the top of the food chain when it comes down to hotel accommodation or whatnot. So that's what priceline.com does. It goes in, people book hotels. Priceline.com doesn't own hotels and things like that that I know of, but it's a marketplace for you to go to and to book air. They do airplanes, hotels, travels, all that good stuff. So they're trying to get to that marketplace and to put people houses to grow more hosts and guests into their community. So they're trying to Uberize people, the hotel industry, right? So uh, will they be able to do this successfully? I don't know. This is something I won't be buying immediately as it comes out. I will wait to see how it performs, to see its finances, to see how it can deliver on its long-term strategy because they have a very big hill to climb up because you already have people like Hotel.com, Priceline.com, Kayak.com, and so many websites, Expedia that's already over there, Travelocity, Orbitz, these companies are already doing that. And um, they are taking some of Airbnb's technology and they're expanding. So can Airbnb get in there and dominate? It's more riskier than a lot of people believe it is. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is my take on Airbnb and also the IPO that it's looking to do here I think by the end of the year or sometime in 2021. Um, hope you guys and girls invest wisely. Um, I read this information directly off of the SMS1A report off of sec.gov. I hope you find this very helpful to you. Um, and as always, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, hit the share button, hit some comments. Let me know what you think. Will you be buying Airbnb? All the other good things like that. Share this with your friends, family, and cousin if you got something out of it. But until the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, my name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investment. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.